Welcome to episode 12 of season 5 of the Foyne Jones Show. We're getting back to business today with our special guest, Matt Paul of Paul Family Financial. And it's that last bit, Charlie, that makes the intro music, the theme tune music for the Foyne Jones Show so fantastic. Here we go. It's a Wednesday uh, Wednesday morning. We're recording in Brighton. We're back in the studio. And amazingly, we're recording episode 12 of season five of the Foyne Jones Show. And this season, as you know from the brilliant guests we've been having, we are getting back to business. This podcast is going to reach you on iTunes. It's going to reach you on Spotify. And Charlie Hula, we have ripped it up on YouTube with Elle's episode. We're now reaching people on YouTube. Today, for me... We've got a really special guest because part of my podcast is about saying thank you to people who supported me and my business. This person sitting in the studio supported my business, but he supported me as a person and my family. Matt Paul, who LinkedIn Connections will know because this boy is bigger than me on LinkedIn. Matt Paul from Paul Family Financial. Welcome to Sussex by the Sea. Welcome to the Foy and Jones Show. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Yeah, very well. Thanks for having me, and it's uh, it's great to be here. Looking forward to today, aren't you, mate? You've come kitted up. You've got your Manchester United tracksuit on. You're a Man U fan, born and bred. And That's it. You're, you're one of these unique characters. <laughs> you're, a, you're a Manchester United fan from the suburb of Manchester, from, from Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, 10 you're not minutes far from, the from Old Trafford, are you? No, live in Sale, so literally 10 minutes from the ground. And, you know, I speak to people over the country, and they say, oh, who's your team, red or blue? I'm a red. Where are you from? Manchester. No, you're not. Shut up. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get United fans in Manchester, but yeah, it's true. It does happen. You, you certainly do. And we, we were out last night, and we'll come on to that as the podcast evolves. And uh, I was saying, growing up in Fulham, when, when Fulham were a lower league team, there was more Man United and Liverpool fans yeah. in my year at school yeah. than there was Fulham fans. <laughs> I don't know if that's changed, and, and they are a huge club. But, but we will talk about your love of Manchester United. And, and the unique way you combine your personality, your family, your, your love of football with what yeah. you do business-wise. Because if we're honest, you know, finances can send a lot of people to sleep. They can yeah. scare a lot of people. It's always it's something we're uncomfortable talking about. You've got an amazing story, and that's going to be the beginning of the podcast, Charlie. We're going we're gonna to understand what happened in Matt's career that led to the launch of Paul Family Financial. Yep. So before we start, and this is something that Bart Murphy that Bart Murphy started, uh, we've got to say hello to the Paul children, mate. So there's a camera there. So so let's, let's work through a one boat. Should we say hello to Jenny first, Jenny. Mrs. Paul? Hope hello, Mrs. Hope Paul. Right. He, he did behave last night. We, <laughs> we only had a couple of beers before the football and, and the diet is still in, because, you know, the diet's OK. There. You did yeah. well. Yeah, You did right. well, mate. So, he- hello to Jenny. But let's go through the family. Yeah, it's so got Jenny, my wife. We've got Leo, 12 years old, just out of secondary school. He's now coming to, to watch the Mighty Reds with me. We've got Ollie, who's nine, coming up to 10 soon. So hello, Ollie. And our little terror, Alfie, six years old. And he is, yeah, he's one on his own, Alfie, but... Who, who's, who, who designed my Christmas card? It was Alfie, yeah. Alfie, thank you very much for the Christmas card. And what about Bobby the Frenchie? Bobby the Frenchie, yeah, he's, he's settled in really well. Great there with the go, kids. Man. We've, we've, done, we've, done a family, we we've done a family intro to, to get people to know you. But, but Matt, you know, we are going to go into talk about your, your content and your position mm. on LinkedIn, because you do something different to to the world of financial but this is a powerful episode in a way when you start to tell and when Matt Paul starts to tell his story and that's what we want we want to do now so we want to get to know you and your business and talk about how you turn something which I which I hope you don't mind me saying very negative Mm. into something amazingly life-changing and positive so tell us the Paul Family Financial story yeah so Paul Family Financial was born in a time of desperation really you know we we, myself and Jenny working for a company we got made redundant in the May 2020 lockdown had just hit and you're thinking oh shit you know you got three kids look after you've been made redundant your income's gone overnight what do we do so we had we had a couple of options to consider and one stood out above all of them and it was to go it alone so you know we 
lockdown, we were in the garden, it was nice weather, and we just thought, you know what, let's, let's go for it, let's mm. just go for it, set up ourselves. I've wanted to do it for a long time, have my own business, my own brand, but there was never, never that right time, having a young family, being employed, we had the salary, the, the security of that, I suppose, but when you look back now, you think, well, there was no security at all because it could have been taken away in an instant like, well, like it was. Well, that, that security went yeah. like that. And, yeah. and, and, and I know this through some of the, I'm going to say some were heartbreaking, some were inspirational, mm. some, were, some were truly worrying. But we had so many conversations during lockdown one, two and three yeah. through people who did face, and, and there'll be listeners to this show that, that are facing that situation where... You know, they don't know if to turn left or turn right. Yeah. And, you know, some some people won't be able to pay the mortgage because they're faced with redundancy or the businesses have gone under. And, and it was a very poignant moment. And you saw people's side hustles become something bigger. Yeah. You've seen people turn their hobbies into a small business and, and it become bigger and bigger. But you took, a, you, you took the experience and skills you had as a, as a key player in a business yeah. and you reached that moment where... You were going to give it a go, but how quick does it? You know, talk us through that because you're mm. saying, "Oh, we're in the garden, we decided to do it." It can't be as simple as that. There must be no. more to it than that. No, we, like I say, we had a couple of options, and it, it took us a good week to to mull over them and work out what was best for myself, the family, and you know, since we've had the kids, everything we do, it's it's all for them and it's all about them and giving them what they giving them what they want, and we wanted to do something that sort of involved everybody really, so. When we sat down and thought, you know what, the, the, the positive for me old place was that the guys there, they, they encouraged me to get active on LinkedIn and create my own personal brand, really. So when I, when I actually left the company, I'd built up a decent following on LinkedIn for a, for a financial person anyway. And we thought, yeah. Why for a financial person, Matt? Would you say they're, they're, they're a shyer, shyer <laughs> beast on social media? I think left and right brain. Yeah. Financial people are very left brain, process driven. The creative side, you know, in certain instances, it's, it's not there. So when you look at financial people a lot on social media in general, I think it's very, very sort of rigid in what they do, where they'll say, I, I'm a mortgage advisor, I can help you buy a house, I can help you move home, I can help you remortgage. Mm. But they don't really show the personality, and that's what I wanted to bring to it. And doing videos and podcasts like this is, is great for me to get my personality out there and just show what I'm all about. And then... With having that following already, we were out there in the social media world and we just thought, do you know what, Let, let's bring that brand into what we're all about, which is family. Mm. Then the name, Jenny thought of the name, Pool Family Financial, and we thought, that's the one. You're not claiming the, the glory. You're I'm leaving, not, you're no, leaving well, that I'll give that to Jenny. She'll never offer. forgive me. So, yeah. you know. No, fair play. One fair of them. Play. Yeah, so uh, that's how it was but, born. But, but, I mean, you know, you, you, you're being very modest about, about the following and, and, mm. and about that. But the... the, the when I noticed you, when when I saw that you know things were happening, and you know, and I was struggling, I was struggling to get the right advice and the right guidance, yeah. and and it's hard when you're a business owner, yeah. you've got you've got different backstories and different situations, and and you need to be able to talk to someone you can trust. I I got to notice you with the don't be a dick yeah. because <laughs> that that was that was amazing, you know, little infographics, don't be a dick, and and you were taking scenarios of people making or individuals making the wrong decision. Yeah. For, for a whole multitude of reasons, whether it's intentional or unintentional mm -hmm. and whatever. But it, it kind of crystallised a lot of the thoughts people have. Yeah. Should I do this? Should I tell the truth about this credit card? Should I get a car loan? Should I not? Should I, you know, and how things can come back and bite you. That, mm. that, was, that was phenomenally popular. Yeah. Is he yeah. still going? He, he he's is. He's not as busy as he he's was. He's not as busy he? as he was. We've had a lot going on, but yeah. he'll be back with a, with a vengeance, don't worry. Yeah. Is that I reckon in current affairs, you've got a few angles you could go at there. That's it. That's it. You know, we, we, we brought it out initially. Again, that was Jenny's idea. So all the credit to Jenny on Don't Be a What'd Dick. What do you do? I do the mortgages. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so that's, <laughs> that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Jenny's the very creative person in the relationship. So, you know, a lot of the ideas do mm. come from Jenny for the social media stuff. And I put it all together then. But Don't Be a Dick. It's, it's just a, it's a lighthearted way to say, you know, we all do this, but, but don't do it. It's gonna and it's gonna scupper your chance yeah. of doing a mortgage or getting this, doing that. It'll put you back six months, a year, two years. 
and it's just, it's just I, a I would say way. Uh, and people who know who know me will probably agree with this is that over the years I've, I the creative side of my brain has dominated the yeah. the, 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 the 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 process driven side of my brain all right it definitely has yeah. and, and I would certainly say that I would have made, been more creative and optimistic and stupid <laughs> with some of my some of my financial decisions We've over all done the years it. yeah no and I, you know I'm going to say that and I've learned from that Charlie since I've been working with Matt I have become a more boring human being with my finances. Do you know what I mean? It's like, do you pay your bills? Yes. Do you do that? Yes, yes. My credit score is best in class. Everything is is in play. Yeah. And and he made he, he led me on that journey with a smile on his face. And we got on. There was a there was a football case. We never met until yesterday. Yeah. You know, Matt Matt come down from Manchester yesterday. Everything was virtual. We you know, but but I was going through a difficult sale and a, and a complex purchase with lots of different different factors input in it and it was it was beating us yeah. to an extent but we knew we, we knew it could work but it was beating us and um Matt, you had the ability to listen. You had the ability mm-hmm. to to be patient. You was, you know, you you push us when we had to be pushed. But we we got there, and it was it. And we had so much there, and it was also the ticking time, ticking time of the stamp duty <laughs> holiday. But but we got there, mate, with a couple of days to spare, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, so, easy. Yeah, easy. I mean, it was, it, it, and at the same time, I was moving offices. You know, there was, there was so much was going on, but but we got there, and I look back now, and I think that without the without trust. And without a relationship, that can't happen. Mm. And, um, from what I see about Paul Family Financial and the and the content you put out, it is relationship and trust yeah. building. Because some of the the testimonials and recommendations and praise you get, they're off the Richter scale. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that must be yeah. that must be so rewarding for you. It is. That's that's the best part of the job, and it's it's building those relationships, and you know, it's it's going on that journey with your client. And at the end of the day, we're a family. We know how much this means to people as well. We've been through it as well, selling houses, moving house, credit issues in the background. So we know exactly what it means to get to that end result. And we go on that journey with our clients. And more often than not, we become mates at the end of it. And that's what it's all about, is looking after our clients. And our our company motto, we've got, we've got hashtag team pool, and then we've got let our family look after yours. Yeah. And that, that's what it's all about for us, is, is getting people on that journey and getting the outcomes that they really yeah. need to, to happen. And, and if you could sort of crystallise your services and, and what you're doing, mm. just, just 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 imagine the people listening to, to, to the show don't know what you do mm-hmm. and they, they haven't seen your content. I mean, they must have seen yeah. your content. I mean, I'm connected to everyone, so I like your content. They must have seen it. But just 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 take a bit of time to explain. And, and you are talking to business owners. You yeah. are talking to people at senior level. But we're also going to be talking to people that are on the beginning of their financial journey, mm. you know, and, 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 and I know, and we've spoken about this before, but it's something that, that our our leaders in this country need to think about in terms of schools and colleges as as putting, you know, financial management onto the studies, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Because it, we're not really taught it. So depending on how your parents are, you, you pick up bad habits or good habits. Yeah. But I think it's something important for people at the beginning of their journey as well. So what is it you offer the listener? Matt? Yeah. So, so basically it's, like I said before, going on that journey, start to finish, helping people understand the implications of certain decisions they make with the finances. And the first thing to understand is exactly how your credit file is looking. You know, so from, from a mortgage perspective, our, our end goal is to help people get a mortgage and get the result that they, they're looking for. And it's all about going through that journey step by step, understand mm. your credit profile, understanding your income, your expenditure, those are the three main components of how a mortgage is sort of built up, really. Income expenditure, which is affordability, and then the credit aspect on the back of that is understanding, you know, if you've got a CCJ or a default, how's that going to impact you on getting a, a mortgage with this lender? And then it's our job to pick through all that and say, right, well, based on your individual circumstances, you can do this, that, and that. And it's helping the clients understand exactly where they stand, what's possible, what's not possible. And it's never too early to go on that journey either. You know, so if someone coming out with education and they might have had a bit of bad debt in the background with, with credit card issues that credit card companies throw at them left, right and centre. Yeah. They say it's free money initially. They might have a phone bill that they miss a payment on and they just think, oh, forget it. They don't pay it again. They get a default. So 
it's it's preparing people for getting to that stage. And it is. It's that. It's yeah. that. You know. It's that seven pound fifty yeah. default on a phone bill that could come exactly. back and because you're you're dealing with a you're dealing with an algorithm. You're dealing with a process. Yeah. You're dealing with a computer. I mean, I don't want to go back to Little Britain, but a computer says yeah. no. You know, I say that a lot. You're yeah. dealing with that, aren't yeah. you? And and that's where you need someone with you. And um and, and I remember some of our conversations, and you're like, well, this this we're going to be okay. I'm like, yeah. it's great for you to say that, man, but you're not that. I'm like, well, you, you know, help, help. <laughs> <laughs> but but you are, and mm. with the right support and the right time, that makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does make a difference. Yeah. And, and and then I'd imagine from from your journey, you you kind of because because you you were you were working in an office, weren't you? Yeah. Right? So you were so so you're not just going it alone on your own business. You're going it alone during a pandemic. Yeah. So we are. Maybe the government weren't, but we were locked down, you mm-hmm. know. I'm trying to keep this unpolitical, Charlie, but there's some <laughs> things I can't not bring in, you know. You weren't going to any garden parties, were you, mate? There was no uh, no gatherings. No comment. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no I didn't. We stuck to the rules. <laughs> yeah, you, st- you start to the rules with your family. So you started working, I guess, on your, on your kitchen table, did you? Or? Yeah, first lockdown. We were still with the old company. Kids were at home, homeschooling them, oh. and, you know... Kitchen table. I mean, I've got two boys, oh and they're, 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 you know, it was bad enough having, <laughs> uh, having uh, them at home at lockdown, yeah. being 21 and, and 17 or 16, whatever they were. Sort of the years have just, I don't know where we were with it now, but, yeah. but during the school days, I mean, you know, I, I, I think medals could be awarded yeah. to parents dealing with some of that. I mean, it was tough. Yeah. It was very tough. And we, we've always said, you know, we were working through that. And at a time when lockdown first hit and mm. everything literally shut down, you, the, the, the property market shut down and I was working the background on developing the business and that side of it yeah. to try and push the business forward then. Then came the redundancy and we thought, you know, bedroom, bedside table, dressing table, kitchen table. And we said, if we can get through that working, we'll get through anything. Yeah. So, you know. And you we, did. We did. And, and you here did. We are. And yeah. you did. And what you did caught my attention. Mm. All right. And, you know, it caught my attention. I needed someone. I, I was struggling with the people yeah. I was working with, and it, it caught my attention, and that's a big part of why you're here today. But but I think what, what would be really good to talk about, because it's going to benefit a lot of our listeners, it's not the... It's not mortgage rated actually, but but it is in a way. But it's what you do, Matt, to make social media fun because mm. you you seem to have this this continual energy, right? Yeah. And and I want people to connect with you. I want them to connect with Matt Paul, Paul Family Financial, and just just see it the content he's putting out because I take inspiration from it, and I do recruitment and digital storytelling. Yeah. So you could say I should be the other way. No, yeah. I, I see good ideas of good people, and I make them work in mm. for my clients or in our sector. But but you've you, you are making social media and content on LinkedIn fun for your business, aren't you? Yeah. And that, that's something great. And it, the, talk us through the plan and how that happens. So I think with the plan, it's, it's all about being, being yourself firstly. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to be yourself. The last thing someone wants to do is see someone on social media. And, you know, social media can be a bad place for stuff that's not real, obviously. But for me... It's all about being myself, showing my personality, what I'm about, the integrity I've got, how I help my clients. And it's just trying to bring a bit of a bit of personality to the mortgage sector as well, because like I say, a lot of a lot of advisors are stuck with compliance of what you can say and what you can't say. You know, some are very strict with the compliance regime they've got with the networks. For us, it's it's being personal, but also relating that to business at the same time as well. So it's trying to make mortgages a bit fun in a way. Mm. And education as well is a big thing, you know, because there's so many different quirks and so many different variations on lending criteria and what they can do, what they can't do, what they can accept. And it's just educating people to say, do you know what? If this is you, there's something you can do with it. And it's just putting that seed in people's head to think, do you know what? That's me, that. And maybe there is something I can do when I thought I couldn't. But the, per- the personal side is so important. Man. Yeah. And the, and the poor family financial and, and, and you bring your family into it. And, yeah. And, and people say, you know... Is that appropriate or not? Of course, it's appropriate mm. because it's who you are, yeah. and and I think in a in a situation in, very similar to recruitment in a way that you're dealing with something that can change someone's life. Yeah. So I'm dealing with something that means someone can go on holiday. They can actually, if they get the job of their dreams, have a conversation with someone like you yeah. about 
upgrading or selling mm. and buying and you can actually it could be more simple than that it could be I'm really not getting on my boss and I want to feel good about my job or yeah. I want to do something I like and that side of recruitment is is often overlooked because it's an industry which is sometimes frowned upon for different reasons some people approach it in a way which deserves to be frowned upon because yeah. if you're offering that type of service you're treating people like that why why should you get praise yeah. but then you've got those pockets of excellence where people stand up and they're creative and they they do things differently i think you've done that with with your brand and your and your your content but it, it goes beyond that in, in, a, in a way that i would imagine people would already proceed they know you mm, yeah and that's the power of yeah. linkedin isn't it, it and, is. and if you can do it as a startup mortgage business which launched during a pandemic anyone listening to this show could do it yeah definitely and that that's got to be definitely. inspirational hasn't it it's yeah. got to be inspirational yeah, so definitely. let's wrap up the first half of the podcast so so matt we've got to know you yeah. All right. We've got to know you. We know you're a Manchester United fan, and we know we've got we've got Leo, Ollie, and Alfie following in the Manchester United footsteps. Jenny is the brains behind the business. Hello, That's Jenny. Yeah. She's the brains behind the business. But something which could have been a very difficult time for your family become something very special. Yeah. Talking about the economy, talking about you know inflation and and where everything is. How do you see the future of the mortgage market looking mm. in 2022? Because we are staying on topic, Charlie. We are getting back to business. So let's make sure we just, we just end this half of the podcast, first part of the podcast, just talking about what, what you see the next 10, 11 months yeah. being like, the rest of 2022. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. And, you know, it's it's been manic. The, the, the stamp duty break initially helped the mortgage and the property market really keep the economy going in a way really to some extent i think for this year we're going to see probably much of the same as last year there's just not enough properties out there for people to buy at the minute that's that's the biggest thing with property demand there's a lot of people that want to buy there's just not enough for people to buy so you know hopefully we'll see a shift in that with people putting the properties on the market getting the property market moving a little bit in turn that should then stabilize the prices a little bit hopefully as well there's just the, the price have gone crazy because of the, the demand and I've got a friend who's an estate agent back in back in uh, the hometown and she puts properties on within a day there's, there's 30 40 inquiries on it mm. you get massive offers over the asking price that inflates the property value then so you know hopefully we'll see with with the way that interest rates will probably rise a little bit more over the, as, as the months go on as well hopefully we'll see prices stabilize a little bit a bit more coming to the market and things coming back to normal a bit more hopefully. Uh, and where's, where's your challenge with the market is the challenge education of the the education of the the potential homeowner the borrower or is it relationships with the lenders because i'd mm. imagine there's a whole minefield on both ways i mean it's, there a, is. it's not a world i even pretend to no. understand <laughs> but but i'm just interested in that yeah yeah so that the main ch- it's you know it's it's a challenge all around and lenders lenders have set criteria, set policy. So you, you, you sort of get to know the lenders, what they like, what they don't like. Some can deviate away from it slightly. You know, some are a bit more flexible than others. With the clients, the biggest challenge at the minute is because the properties are going so much over asking price, it's actual down valuations of properties. We're seeing that quite a bit at the minute. And another issue we're seeing at the minute is the land registry. They've got a 12-month backlog of actually registering properties. So if someone buys a house today for 300 grand, for example, that won't show the land registry for 12 months. So when you're getting valuations done, these surveys are going off properties that were, val- that were, that were sold last year. They went on the land registry last year, and it's sort of mm. outdated now. So we're seeing issues with that possibly now, uh, which which is frustrating, but it's, it's just out of your control. There's a lot more so. detail going into the valuations now. Though. There I is. Mean, it ain't like a little drive-by the postcode no, anymore, is no. it? There's, there's a lot more going in. Yeah. So more responsible lend. Would you say it's more responsible now? Or Yeah, I, th- I think... Some some will do drive by valuation and remote ones. It all depends on how much deposit someone mm. putting down. If if they're putting down a five percent deposit, then they'll say, right, we need to out see that property mm. to make sure it is worth what they're paying for it. Whereas somebody buying for three hundred grand, putting one hundred and fifty grand deposit down, the lender will think, well, do you know what? There's plenty of equity there, so we'll do it automatically, and you know we'll we'll take a chance on it. So lenders are still trying to cut costs where they can do by doing these remote ones, but it's. It's always a challenge with valuations, criterias, incomes, expenditures, credit. Every single client is different in the in the requirements. And it's understanding that 
level of detail we need to know. So we do a lot of work up front, understand the situation, credit files, pay slips, accounts, bank statements, get it all up front. It's like spiritual cleansing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And you keep yeah. coming, you keep going, I've got nothing more to give you, yeah. man. Yeah, I think you have. Yeah, oh, come on, now? Peter. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, but again, that actually from the other side, when it's done... Yeah, and you've bared your soul, and you know where you are. You feel so much better. Yeah, because you actually yeah. know. And then, and then, actually, with with advice from someone like yourself, you can start making these little steps. Yeah, we can fix that. We can fix that. That could be fixed. That's yeah. And all of a sudden, you, you do feel there is something to go for. Yeah. And 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 I think that's the that's that's the biggest thing for me. So yeah, let's let's finish first off. Show. I've got a question. I haven't prepared you for this one. It's something that that I was go- always going to ask. But if you could change one thing in the mortgage industry that would be better for you, it would mm-hmm. make it better for me, it would make it better for Charlie, it would make it better for the listeners. What would you change in your industry? That is a good question. I know. I'm proud of question. that one. Yeah. I've kept yeah. that in the locker as well. I've not shared that. <laughs> you caught me off guard with that one. Yeah. One thing I would what change... What would you change? If you could change it today, it would be different from tomorrow. I would change, probably from a lending perspective, the flexibility and what lenders can, can lend to consumers. At the minute, it's, it's quite outdated with the affordability side of things. So a lender will say, well, based on this situation, we can lend Mr. and Mrs. Jones four times their income or four and a half times an income. And realistically, where, where we are now in terms of property prices and incomes, it's just not enough for a lot of people. And they, can't, they can afford a, a much higher mortgage, you know, and the regulations, they have stress tests that they use, and it's, it's outdated now. So I, I get that, because I, I know friends, yeah. right? and, and, and they're, you know, they're in a private rental, mm. right? and they're paying an ex- a very high yeah. monthly private rent, but they're not in arrears. They're making that payment. They're showing they can afford it, yeah. but that doesn't always replicate it on what they can borrow. No. But then if you're paying that every month, how the hell are they going to have a chance of saving? So exactly. I, I guess flexibility could flexibility. be... A, could be a perfect way yeah. for us to end the first part yeah. of the podcast. That was a tough question, mate, but I thought, he answered it well, Charlie, didn't he? Yeah, it's tough. Well done. That was, it was, what side of your brain answered that one? I'm going to say my left side, yeah. Yeah, all right, mate, cool. <laughs> That's the first half of today's show. When we come back from our break, we are going to be talking football with Matt Paul, and we're going to be going on a journey from the spiritual home of football, Craven Cottage, home of Fulham FC, to the theatre of dreams, Old Trafford. And I've got a little penalty shootout quiz prepared oh, for lovely. you, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you ready? The digital revolution is no longer a spectator sport, it's game on. The magical art of storytelling is the future. Social, content, branding, podcasts, video marketing, and virtual 360 tours. This is Jones Digital. Ch- Ch- Charlie, half-time oranges, mate. Thank you very much. There you go. Look, look, we're talking football, so he's given us a half-time orange. He's given us a roasting in yeah, the changing rooms. That's it, the hair dryer's head, out. The hair dryer. You know what I mean? I've got, I've got the David Beckham scar <laughs> where, the, where the boot hit me, where he kicked it. So we're going to go into we're going to go into a. This was a very big feature in my first few series of the podcast. All right, it was a Foyne Jones penalty shootout. We're going to shrink it down. All right, but we are going to talk about uh, you and your love of Man United. So, first penalty, first question is quite an easy one for yeah. you, Matt. Yeah, why are you a Man United fan? It's from my dad. My dad was a red, and when I was eight years old, seven or eight, I think it was, it was my first game at Old Trafford, and it was United against Arsenal. And Cantona. Oh, Charlie, here we go. Cantona, free kick, top corner, with his cast on, running our way like that. I'll never forget that day. So ever since then, just been hooked. So you're a Man United fan because your dad said so, and Eric Cantona. And I'm from Manchester. I I mean, we know that. We've established (laughs) this. This is is the unit. And and it's it's not like a long story of, oh, yeah, but my dad's brother was originally from Manchester, or he saw George Best, or whatever. It's like... Actually, it's my local, local team. team. Yeah. It's my local team, and that, that's important. So, so, so Cantona was, was the player. Yeah. Who, who else stood out for you over the years as a player? Qu- question two, actually. Question two. What, what's been, as a Man United fan, yeah. the most painful moment you've had to deal with? Most painful yeah, moment? Yeah, you thought I was going to say the best moment. I was talking about the moment when you cried, when it hurt. When Fergie left. Yeah. I got very emotional that day, and I didn't expect it, to be honest, but... You know that that adult that was all a new, 
as a kid growing up, Fergie, success. And you think he's just going to carry on. But end of that game against Swansea, it was just like, right, we need to crack on here. And it just it's just not worked out since, to be honest. So these last eight years have been tough. Yeah, as a United fan. But we all go through it, don't you, we? You made me laugh, because la- last night we were watching our, our, our one of our local teams here. We were watching Lewis, yeah. and uh, they, they won. Big shout-out to Lewis. They won 2-0 against Cray Wanderers. I think they're second or third in the table at the moment. It's looking... Could be a head-to-head uh, Sussex, East Sussex, Sussex, West Sussex shootout against Worthing, maybe. And obviously... Fans of the show will know our sponsor player Michael Class yeah. was, was 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 strolling around midfield giving it some. When he, he, he played, he all played right. well, yeah, he Good did. Performance. He, he did play well, and uh, there's rumours out there that you know someone one of the players may, may may have by the time this episode episodes out may have moved on to Tottenham. We mm-hmm. don't know, but that was a different experience. But you did make me laugh. He made me laugh, Charlie. He goes because uh, I was introducing him to Mike's mum and dad when we were talking, and I said, "Oh, but it's a bit different, Old Trafford." He went, "Not at the moment. It's not. <laughs> it's about as quiet as this Old Trafford. <laughs> Is it really that bad?" <laughs> It's it's not it's it's a bit it's different it's different yeah. you know there's a bit of frustration there I think at the minute and it's it's one of those is it tough not to. winning it every year I mean are you struggling with that I'm, I'm all right now yeah in the in the first couple of years after Fergie left it it was hard because you know seeing City coming through and you just think I know what they felt for years now and it's we still yeah. never got back to it obviously so you know it's we say we're through, through the the building phase again and again and again and it's it's just got to change. And, uh, I yeah. don't get it because I follow Fulham, so yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't get that success and glory. And yeah, we're we're having a very good season, mm. and I've got no doubt at all we'll be back in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, whether we stay up there is another challenge because we haven't quite managed to do that on the two times we've come up. So the Championship is great if you're winning the playoffs or you're getting promoted and you're coming up, but then you come down the earth, bang. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And for us, it was, I remember the, we come back up and then uh, we played Arsenal and they just whacked us. We were like four down within about half hour and you're thinking like, oh, here we go. You know? Yeah, here we go. Here's, here's another season. Yeah. Here's another season. And um, But but we're having fun with my football team, all right? Yeah. So, Good. So, so the Kent and our goal and being a local lad from Manchester... Sir Alex is the um, Sir Alex is that moment of um, despair, yeah. And I want to talk despair because I think that's the part of football that you have to get if you're a real yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, you take your boys, Man United now, don't you? I've seen that again. You bring that to life on LinkedIn. Yeah. For, for the well, I've wanted a season ticket for years and years and years, and for one reason or other, you know, we've never been able to get one. And this season, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go for it. And, uh, and can yeah. you? Could you? Can you share? And uh, I think it was it Leo was it Leo? I don't know it was one one of the three and I can't remember what, what age it was so I don't want to get it wrong I don't want to name them wrong but yeah who was it who was it who went to the training and came back with a different shirt on yeah oh, that was Alfie okay yeah. so let's talk about Alfie <laughs> going on a football camp and coming home in a Manchester City shirt because because that that I found beautiful I Devastated. found it beautiful to hear it was actually a client well, of course it was I yeah. never I never never met him before yeah started talking to him probably two years ago now we put a plan in place. And now we're, we're dead good mates now. And he runs a football, he's a football coach and does PE lessons and all that. And now he went off to his summer camp last year, 2021. And uh, they, had, they had a water fight on the last day. And he had, he had a change of clothes with him, you know, so we, we, we had him prepared. Went to pick him up. Nathan, cheers, Nathan. He'd, uh, yeah, kindly put Alfie in one of his old city tops. And Alfie couldn't look happier because he was winding his dad up. Yeah. I thought, great. So after that, straight to Old Trafford, new kits. Have that, Nathan. I bet that hurt the left side of the brain. Though, oh, didn't very it? much, you yeah. spend all that was... money on the kit. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. He, did, he did like it that a... at all, mate. Did you have to pay for the name and the number and Names, all Names, numbers. Yeah. Well, Leo got Sancho, 25. Yeah. <laughs> and then a few days later, we got Ronaldo, so he was a bit gutted. But, yeah. you know. <laughs> Can I have another one, Dad? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, fair play. So, so my final question in the shootout, Matt, and uh, this, this, I think you get it, but can, can you give me... Four Fulham players who have made the journey to the Theatre of Dreams. So they've so they've played at Craven Cottage yeah. and they've also played at the Theatre of Dreams. Could be either way you want. I'm just okay. interested in it. Can you give me give me four players who have played for both clubs? Okay. From Fulham's Craven Cottage to the Theatre of Dreams. We've so got Louis Sahar. Yep. We've got Berbatov. Oh, Dimitar, yep. We've got Chris Morlin. Yep. And Edwin Van der Sar. Van der Sar. Not bad. Not bad at all. What a great signing he was. Not bad at all. Saha Smalling, Berbatov 
and Van Class. Sar. I yeah. mean, I think we extended but Edwin Van der Sar's career by five years because yeah. he did not stop working for he two years brilliant. at Craven Cottage, mate. Yeah, you know, and do you know what? He, he signed a three-year deal when he saw his deal out. Yeah, and you know. I think Al Five might have like pulled a bit of a stroke because I think he said he's signing for the Man United of the South and um, yeah. <laughs> but but amazing keeper um, Louis Saha is probably a, I, I genuinely think he's one of my favourite all time Fulham players he was unplayable in those Tagana years I told you the Chris Smalling story when I, I come back from the Europa League qualifier no, I think it was one of the group stages and he was playing you know he was playing a weaker team it was against a, a Danish side and he brought the ball down in midair on his chest and he pinged the pass with the outside of his foot to Simon Davis. Yeah. And I, I went home and spoke to my father and I, and I went like, he's a future Fulham captain. I'm, I, he was unbelievable. He's like, he's like Tony Gale. He's unbelievable. And Fergie sort the same thing because he yeah. bought him about four <laughs> games in. We bought him from Maidstone for like 10 grand, 10 tracksuits and three bags of balls. Um, and, <laughs> and he went for millions for Man United. And uh, there he goes. He played for England. And, yeah. and Dimitar Berbatov was just a... Uh, I, I don't think Dimitar Berbatov signed for Fulham I think he signed for Martin Yole and I yeah. spoke about this in the podcast with David Blitz but that was just special times I'm going to give you a player for who's been on this stage he's been on this show Paul, Paul Parker. Parker yeah of course Fulham's Paul of Parker course. Fulham's Paul Parker has played for Man United we could talk about Ryan Tunnicliffe if you want do you know what yeah. I mean here's to you Ryan Tunnicliffe <laughs> Fulham love you more than, more, than, more than you will know but there is a connection there yeah. and, I, and I've always thought that Gary Neville always used to speak highly of Fulham mm. and come into Craven Cottage. And Sir Alex seemed to have a lot of respect for Roy Hodgson, so it was there. Yeah. And in those Roy Hodgson days, I've got to bring this in, Charlie. I remember a match when you had Wayne Rooney and Darren Fletcher as centre-halves, and we turned you right over at the cottage a couple you of times. did a few times, yeah. 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 Never done that well at Old Trafford, <laughs> no. but we, we beat you once at Old Trafford, and Jim Genichi or Jimmy Inamoto, as we scored, as we used to call him, scored a yeah. goal, and Lee Clark scored a goal, and that was in a Chrissy Coleman years. But I, I, I was at um, a funeral, I didn't make that game, and it was like, we couldn't believe it was coming through. Yeah. Um, but... That's that's a journey from Fulham's Craven Cottage to Man United's Theatre of Dreams. And we've got Paul Parker, Ryan Tunnicliffe, Van der Slaar, Smalling, Saha, Berbatov. There's probably a few more that yeah. we'd get if we, we carried on going. But you've done well, mate. I'm going to say you've won the shootout. Thank you that very much. That was a great yeah. part of the show. When we meet each other, we will get you, Alfie, Ollie and Leo to the spiritual home of football, Craven Cottage. It might change them forever. It might not. But there, there'll yeah. be invites there for them, mate. Thank you right? very much. We have done, Matt, all right? And yep. this, is, this is why we do this. We have welcomed you to the show. We've got to know you and Paul Family Financial. We have made LinkedIn fun. Yeah. Talking about your don't be a dick. We haven't, Matt, spoke about you in your pants. Yeah. <laughs> So I was a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. On, on, on a Sunday morning, I'm going through my LinkedIn feed because I'm sad and I don't stop working. And yes, you're looking in good shape. Yes, you're Thank training. You. But you put you in your pants in a before and after shot. Yeah, I got a, I got a few. This isn't Facebook. Jenny, how'd you let that happen? <laughs> it was. I said to Jenny. No, I'm not having that was her idea. No, it wasn't. But I, I said to Jenny, I said I want to. You must have sort of proved. I want to share my progress. Yeah. But I don't know if it's right for LinkedIn. He said, do you know what? Just, just do it. Just do it. And it's one of them, you know, I'm <laughs> proud of what I'm doing. No, you're doing I'm really well, I'm related to business mate. a bit, you know. Uh, when when, when yeah. I saw him last night, the first thing I did was look down at my, at my, at my belly, <laughs> thinking like, I'm running 5K, I might have to do more intervals, I might have to do some stuff. He's, he's in good shape, mate. He's Thank good, you. I did ask him if he wanted to come for a 5K run, because I'm going to ask all the guests now, Charlie, because yeah. Dave did. He's like, no. I'm not I a runner. Said, so do you want to come and watch Lewis have a burger and a pipe? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you were very good with what you chose and you were yeah. very disciplined, mate. So yeah. fair play to you. Thank and, you. And that is what we want to talk about is making LinkedIn fun. Mm. But I'm going to end the show, Matt, and this will be something very special for you, okay? Okay. I want to imagine you and Paul Family Financial, you're walking out to the centre spot at Old Trafford. It's the Theatre of Dreams. It's full. What's the big stand? North stand? North stand, yeah. Right, so yeah, is that, yeah, so, so you, you're, you're talking to the North stand, and that North stand is full of 10, 15,000 people, even more if it holds it. I don't know what that bit yeah. holds, but, and they're all looking for some advice from you on their finances. Yeah. What would you say to him, Matt? And there's no pressure, but the lights are down and oh, the spotlight's Jesus. on. Yeah. You know, Matt, Paul, <laughs> Matt, Paul. Here you go. What, what advice would you like to give to close the show off? And this is going to go to our connections on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, LinkedIn, all our socials, Instagram, no pressure, centre spot, Old Trafford. What would you say? Closing message. I would say it's never 
never too early to reach out to ask a question. I would say don't fear getting in contact with a professional about your finances. I think a lot of there's a there's a, a massive fear factor for a lot of people just reaching out in the in the first instance to be honest and it's taking that first step to understand your situation, where you are with everything, what plan you need in place to to get to where you want to be. So yeah, top advice, reach out, don't be afraid, understand your own situation and you'll probably know yourself, you'll feel so much better. So much more in control of your finances and where you want to go with your with your your, your plans for the future as well, and just take that first step. Mm. And from my and from my perspective, uh, and I mean this personally from the heart. You know, I can't recommend this man in the business more than the fact you're sitting here and I'm saying yeah, this. Thank you. Um, you. You know, there is always someone in a more difficult situation than you. It doesn't matter how tough it can be. But worrying about your finances, worrying about getting on the housing ladder, worrying yeah. about how you're going to provide for your family, it affects people's mental health. And, yeah. you know, we're working. I've got a guest in the studio tomorrow, and we're working with a, a charity called Balls for Brains who address mental health through rugby and sport. Yeah. Um, when you And I've done some of the pathway guidance. And when you look at why people are struggling, financial pressures and worries are a huge part of that. Yeah. And it may not always be okay, but there is someone you can talk to and yeah. and having good advice and trustworthy advice makes a brilliant difference. So, mate, you smashed it out of the park from the, from the centre spot. Daddy did well. <laughs> Daddy did well. Matt, you've been a brilliant guest, mate. Thank come you. on, you Reds. Come on, you Reds. Um, it's been brilliant to get you on the show. That, Charlie, is the end of episode 12 where we've got back to business with Matt Paul of Paul Family Financial. And as I mentioned, in the studio recording tomorrow is John Tutty, the chairman of this charity, Balls for Brains, and he's going to talk about how he's addressing mental health through rugby. And if you want to reach out to this man, you can send me a message on LinkedIn, you can connect with Matt on LinkedIn. He's here to help you, and I think that last thing we'll share. Never too early to get in touch. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll Thank catch you. up with you very soon. That's the end of today's episode. Thanks for listening. That's the end of today's episode. Next week, I'm joined by a very special guest, our mental health charity partner, John Tutty of the brilliant local charity, Balls for Brains.